Yo, guys, what is good here? So, I ended up sitting down and editing my hour-long Infernoble Test 10 video, which you guys haven't seen. You can check it out. If you guys missed that live, hit that subscribe button, do that notification bell, so you never miss when we go live. And if you guys wanted to watch it live and raw, think about becoming a join member, a knighted member, so that way you can just go back and watch all the live streams in their raw, unedited uh, video form. So anyway, this was the first test hand, and the end board was very, like, bleh. Like, I was actually kind of like, dang, that kind of sucks that that's all I could get to. But after editing, I kind of looked at it, I was sitting there, I was, you know, cooking, I was cooking, and I was like, wow, you can get to so much more, and I just now saw it. So I thought I would take this same opening hand I had in the first test hand video and showcase you, like, a little bit different the way that you can do it. And it gives you to a lot more than just the Flame Swordsman Pass, like I think the original uh, test hand showed. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, so the first thing you do is, or first thing I noticed, like with this hand, I didn't see it, is you just go ahead and normal summon the Flame Swordsman, use the effect to go ahead and grab us the Flame Swords Realm. Flame Swords Realm is key here. It's key because it's going to let us cheat out the Flame Swordsman. Uh, we go and activate the Flame Swords Realm, and we use its effect, sending Ricciardetto to go ahead and summon out the OG Flame Swordsman. Now, normally here, I'd be like, what do you do, right? You'd be like, oh, well, you gotta, you should have sent the Flame Swordsman or something. Well, no, watch this. We go ahead and link this off into the Ferocious Flame Swordsman using the Fighting Flame Swordsman effect to go ahead and send the Salamandra wherever it is at. We send the, the Salamandra, the Flying Flame Dragon, and then we use the Flying Flame Dragon's effect to search us the trap here. Uh, then we can use the effect of Salamandra to equip to the Fighting Flame Swordsman. And then, since we have a card that it is being equipped to, we can special them out Turpin. So we special them out the Turpin. And then we are not warrior locked by any means. We go up here into our favorite, everyone's favorite Fire Link 3, Promethean Princess. We use Princess Effect to reborn out the Ricciardetto that we pitched in the beginning. And then Ricciardetto's effect on summon to go ahead and bring back out one of our level fours. We then synchro here for our Charles, or not our Charles, our Angelica. Charles is coming. Angelica's effect on summon. Argue, yeah, well, never mind. There is no arguability here. We go for museum. We then activate museum here. We pay the cost to go ahead and grab ourselves Almus. Um, we actually, so like, I want to say, like, when I was thinking, looking at it, there'd be a way to grab Durandal. Durandal to go ahead and grab us the um, Renault. And then you could potentially turn Renault and the Flame Princess here into something else. But since we're wire locked, currently in my current extra deck, we only have space for the one Ferocious Flame. So we have no way to get rid of it, if that makes sense. And with Baron being gone and being wire locked, it's just a sad life, man. So instead of adding Durandal, which you could, to get that extension, I found that I, I just, you want to go for Almus. And then you're going to go Almus into Joyous. So I'm going to say that now and might forget it when we get there. So if I do, it's Almus into Joyous. Um, however, since we're here, we can't use the flame, the salamander. We gotta use Turpin's effect target. We chain her effect and we send Ogier. Or Ogi, or it's Ogier ho, 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 to the graveyard. This gets banished. Summons out our Roland. We go Ogier's effect to equip. Museum's effect to move forward. Effect of this, you send Gear Free. Now, given this is like on the percent, they don't have any hand traps or anything. So just do keep that in mind. So we go ahead and link our synchro link some linkro summon here into our immortal infernoble knight emperor charles we equipped it with almas so we go ahead and use charles's effect to destroy the princess and then we go ahead now that we're not we're, it doesn't matter because we're all going to be summoned as fires we're no longer fire locked uh, we go up here into emperor charles chain link one chain link two the excuse me chain link one almas chain link two charles uh, to grab this back almas will then grab us back at the gear feed here and then I did it already, guys. I <laughs> What did I tell you? I told you I was going to get lost in the moment. You use Almus to destroy itself to grab yourself. There is no chain link to grab yourself. Joyous. You use Joyous to grab you back, the gear freed. And then you use Roland to equip the Charles, okay? I told you I was going to forget it. I was going to get lost in repetition. Uh, we go ahead and go gear freed effect, banish the Joyous to summon itself. And then right here in this hand, I'm not going to count the end perm that we opened, but you're going to go ahead and set this right here. Because if you set end perm, uh, you're not going to have space to do the equips. But anyway, right here, we go ahead and move to end phase. We go ahead and equip here. We go Charles' effect to pick up the Almus. And what we're going to do uh, is, since we have the ability to bob and weave, this is why this is actually so cool. I'm so happy I saw this when I was editing and stuff like that. I was like, wait a minute, we can do a lot. We're going to go ahead and equip the Fighting Flame Swordsman. 
So now the end board is a lot better than just Flame Swordsman Pass, right? We end up having the Spell and Trap negate with Charles, the Pop with Charles, that's two disruptions, a Monster Effect negate, that's three disruptions, the Princess and Grave, that's four disruptions. We then have the Book of Moon, which is five disruptions. And then when you use Charles or this to send the Salamandra, so you just have to make sure you utilize this first, you're going to have the ability to fuse later in the turn because you got to send two equip spells, right? So you're going to send these two, whether in whatever order you send them in. And what you're going to do is you're going to trigger the Fighting Flame Swordsman to send the Fighting Flame Dragon. And then you can go Effect of Salamandra with Chain to banish itself to put back this and the Fighting Flame Swordsman back into your deck so you can utilize Swords Realm again to go ahead and summon out your ultimate Flame Swordsman. So you end up having five forms of disruption, man. Five forms off of that card, off of that hand that looked almost unplayable or looked kind of like bad, right? So that's what some of the crazy utility that like the discard outlet that the Flame Sword Realm and stuff that the deck, the deck gives you. Uh, like I said, so now you have a few things, a few options that you can do. Uh, you can go like roll an effect, attempt to equip to Angelica. Then Angelica can chain her effect, sending Malgus. Malgus can then draw us cards if we want to. Or you actually have the ability to go effect a Roland. Actually, what am I talking about, guys? It's too early in the morning for me. You go roll on a target Flame Swords, and so he becomes a quick effect. And then the Prometheum will always target Angelica, and Angelica will always send Malgus. So you're getting a draw no matter what. So you get to start your turn with three cards in your hand. And that's just crazy. That's just wild. Sadly, though, one thing I will say in my deck is uh, you don't really have anything you can turn the Promethean into. And since you had to use the Flame Swordsman going up, but I guess technically speaking, technically you could use like Ro uh, Renault later on to add back the Flame Swordsman and then link it off, link the Promethean plus like Renault into the Flame Swordsman. But this is like this is the end board. Uh, the only bad thing is, is since uh, Fusion uh, Salamander with Chain, uh, this gets destroyed during the end phase, but that's okay because this will be out on your field more than likely. So then Promethean can just bring it back. And that's what makes, like, this This is just insane, guys. This is truly, truly insane that a hand that looked so subpar and so minuscule could do something like this. Now, did it lose to hand traps? Yeah. Did it lose to probably a nib? Yeah. But, again, like, you know, in the sense of just showing test hands, like, the hand looked almost looked like a very bad hand, and it actually proved to be pretty playable in the way. And, like, literally, if impermanence could have been any of your bricks, you're still okay. Uh, the fact that Imperm was kind of like... That's why Swords Realm is probably like... There's a few things wrong with Swords Realm. The ability that you have to send a monster face up from hand or feel. That's probably one of the bad things. But um, the fact that it takes up a space is also kind of like pretty big. That's why normally you would use the Charles to pop it when you equipped or something like that. So that um, it, you make space. But we had to use Charles to get the Princess to the Graveyard. So we could utilize Princess and Princess. Because these cards, this these two interactions... These, the two princesses, their interaction is insane, considering Princess doesn't have to destroy both cards, and Angelica can just dip on out for you, so... Yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I thought it was a pretty cool, like, sequence that I was able to see in post-edit, or during edit, and stuff like that to bring out to you, so, yeah, please remember if you guys enjoy this type of content, comment down below. Let me know if you guys saw any different line with that opening hand that I didn't see, and, yeah, anyway, this is Charles from Team COG, signing out.